All right, YouTube, we're back with the FMS MOA uh, 1.5 meter glider. It's going to be part three. Um, where we left off, we were, where I ran out of memory, was when we were going this, these wires through this channel here. <clears throat> and we're just getting ready to duplicate what we did over there. So first thing we got to do is we got to split, split this wire apart. Actually, before we do that, we're gonna, we're gonna slip this wire in and around the servo. Oops. This wire is hidden okay, so I'll probably just fold this back down. But I want to wipe this off with alcohol, and that way I don't have to worry about hitting that tape again. a little bit more kicker on this end so just want to make sure it's nice and clean so that I get good adhesion with that that tape so we'll let that sit while we tuck this in going around the edge here. You guys maybe a little better shot. Okay. Then we'll do the white wire. So this stuff's tucked down now. So now at this point, we should be able to go ahead and split the wires. This is nice and dry, so we'll get this run down in the meantime. <coughs> okay, so we got that set back down, so don't have to worry about that. Still probably not going to do any tape over it unless I need to. Also just run a little bit of a little bit of white paint over that maybe. Depending on how bad it looks. Okay, so this next step is kind of a scary step. But it's gotta be done, so ground wire is the brown wire. I'm just going to walk this down. Okay, so I went all the way to copper on that toward the end of my cut. So I'm going to go a little bit further. Just wiggle that blade up and down a little bit. Okay, so here's our exposed area. So we'll use that to this area here to actually hook up the ground. So we want to keep away from this area if we're doing our positive lead so we don't have uh, or we can reduce the risk of having a short. same as I did before I'm just trying to separate the copper it's actually quite a bit harder than it looks on this step I'm sure you guys can probably appreciate that if you've done it before okay so same thing here except I'm gonna 
separate the power lead from the signal lead. <clears throat> and I'm just leaving myself ample room between where these two connection points will be to mitigate the risk of short circuit. Now once you have those wires separate, you don't have to use the knife to do it, and that's a little bit safer as if you don't use the knife, but the knife does make it a little easier. <clears throat> okay, so now I'm going to lift up. I need to expose this. Red to get to the power wire. So I have that opened up now. I have kind of a, a loop there. So I'm going to go a little bit beyond. <clears throat> Cut it. Discard that portion. Strip back a small amount as you can strip back and still get the job done. Give it a couple of twists. opening it up with the knife and then I'm feeding the wire through but these strands are getting separated so I want to try to do it a little cleaner than that So I cut this <clears throat> on purpose, of course, so that I can wrap the, the wire around the red. Okay, so I'm going to actually hook this first, just using my finger to pinch it. I'm going to take between these tools, these two tools, I'll be able to manipulate this around. There's a stray piece of copper here. You'll have that occasionally when you're, when you're doing this sort of thing to keep those things away from your work. You don't want to accidentally get those in a spot where they would cause a short circuit. Okay, so we've got our positive line attached. <clears throat> so now I need to do that protective area for soldering. And that'll keep the, the wrong wire from getting heated up. But I also need to be mindful that I don't short circuit anything on this side because when I go to test, both sides of this circuit are going to be attached and they're going to be live. So just be careful. I want to be careful about that. Now you could find an easier piece to use, but this piece works well. And I've got it here already, so. I'm going to just use it again. <clears throat> okay, soldering iron's nice and hot. Cleaning the tip. I'm going to come over with my soldering iron. Okay, so now I'm 
So the only problem is it seems to have adhered to my little protective sheath, which I'm not too fond of the way that turned out. I didn't think it would stick to that. I didn't think it would transfer enough heat to actually stick, but it did. So now we're going to unstick it. That's annoying. Hopefully it didn't melt any of the wires on the other side. For goodness sakes, what a pain in the butt. I did not expect that to happen. Not at all. I wonder why the solder sticks to that. Of course, if I wanted the solder to stick to it, it wouldn't. <coughs> so now I have got to move this part. That's annoying. Okay, so I got it out of there. Just moving it until it can cool a second. Just go in. Just go to a slightly different area with it. I like it, but you can see that the, the solder just stuck to it, which I did not expect at all. I'm just going to flatten this thing so it's easier to use on this attempt. Okay, so this time, a little quicker, a little less heat. Small wire and you don't want to overheat it. Okay, so that worked just fine there. So now I can uh, plug my arm back in, <clears throat> get that cooking. Now I just need to tape around that, peel some of this excess off that's loose. Everything that falls down in here just sticks to the tray there. Because that was. Uh, Got that double-sided tape or the glue adhesive. It's really annoying. All right, <clears throat> small piece of black tape. You'll notice I'm going for black tape on this, uh, even though it's a, you know, like a positive line. Doesn't matter. We just need to cover it up, and the black tape is actually quite a bit better tape in terms of the quality of insulation value. Okay, so we're going to put that sideways like this. I'm going to hold that wire down. <clears throat> we're just going to do it something like that. And that's going to give us some protection from shorting with the understanding that there's no exposed copper on the other lines in that vicinity anyway. So, and here in a, a little bit, we'll actually, we'll actually be gluing this all back down into the cavity here. So for now, we'll just pinch that over and make it a nice tight joint. And then we'll do our ground. And keeping in mind that we already stripped back here, we need to reach to that area, so I'll do that, like we've done in the past on the last couple of joints. And that little loop, guys, is just a get out of jail free card. You don't want to go so nuts that you got, you know, six inches extra cable in an application like this, because the weight doesn't do you any good. Um, but the reality is, you need to make sure that you have a good solid connection. Okay, so now this part is the tricky part where we need to stick the resistor into this wire, the brown wire. This is going to be our current limiting resistor. So I'm just grabbing the sheath with the knife blade. I'm 
kind of rotating away from me, so I'm going to try to spin the wire. And do it the same thing except the other direction. Just pulling it down. See how it's pulled down, guys? I'm going to run the blade in there and just work this. I don't want to cut it, I just want to pull it down, okay? Now, don't get ahead of yourself and accidentally go straight on there without a current limiting resistor. Okay, in the past, I used two 68 ohm resistors, which meant I was basically doing 30 some odd ohms, <clears throat> excuse me, 34 ohms, which is kind of a weird configuration. Um, but it would have been it would have been to try to make the brightness the same as the green. Now, I don't have that exact configuration. Well, actually I do. So I'm going to pause it all uh, come right back. Alright, so if we have two eighth of a watt 68 ohm resistors we're going to put them in parallel here which means that we're going to end up with twice as much wattage power handling, but we're going to have half as much resistance, okay? So it's going to allow twice as much to go through it. So this is like a 34 ohm resistor. <clears throat> but the idea is, since we're just testing this, we still kind of want to just twist it together. We don't want to get it all soldered together. We want to make sure it's not going to get overly hot. So we're just going to use this knife to help encourage an opening. And we're going to slip this through, double it back on itself, testing. And if this works fine, then of course we'll shorten everything up. We'll do it nicely. Okay. So for now, we'll just double this back and double this back on it. Okay. There you go. So that's that's ready to test. Okay, so now the next step is going to be to hook up the battery and we'll see how things go. If it goes well, then we can go ahead and uh, get those soldered back together. Okay, so we got red lights on, we got green lights on. Got a good amount of intensity. Now we, t we just check for temperature. Red notoriously likes to get hot. The other thing we're looking for is consistency and brightness. And see the green and the red? See, it's pretty bright, pretty bright on both sides. getting warm though unfortunately I don't think it's so warm that it's going to be a huge issue I mean some electronics do run a little bit warm sometimes if you're unsure about temperature you have to lick your fingers to get a better transmission of temperature the other thing is you can feel the actual LED if the LEDs are getting hot then that could be a problem now hot and warm are two different things just keep that in mind guys have warm electronics, but you don't want hot electronics. Hot electronics fail prematurely. Okay? So far, so good. I'd say it's probably worth it. Then the brightness will be real similar. Let's uh, shut off the light for you here. See the green, see the red. Okay. Alright, so the next step for us is to Yeah, I can live with that. It's not too hot. So we'll detach the power. Now we can go ahead and clean up and finish these solder joints, which is nice because then I can clean this stuff up. It drives me nuts doing all this temporary crap like this. Okay, so we'll fold our 
wire over neatly. Okay, and then we're going to clip this. Set that aside. We can actually just clip this whole end off, discarding the leads from those, and then we can double it back and hook it up here. So you can see how much nicer that's going to be. It's just a whole lot smaller joint, a lot less wasted area. If you want to do heat shrink, that'd be fine, but you'd have to cut your wire and slide it on. That's a real pain in the butt, in my opinion. Okay, so now this time we're going to do the same thing. We're going to fold this back like that. Give it a nice sharp bend. And that'll give us a good crack at having everything neat in the wire trough there when we're done. Okay, so now I'm going to take this soldering tool that we've been using. I'm going to slide it up under. Up under where we're going to be soldering here. It not look like I separated the wires too much past this, which is actually a good thing, except we need a little bit more room to get our tool through. So separate them a little bit further. We can get this through. Kind of put everything in the direction you want. Soldering iron's hot. We're going to clean the tip. We'll just walk over with this. Got the solder sitting here on the bench. Everything is unplugged, so it'll cool fairly quick. Get that all soldered together neatly. Moving this so it doesn't stick again. That was kind of ridiculous. Looks good. Now we can put this back over here for now, keep it plugged into the wall, so it'll keep soldering iron hot, so we can do the other side here in about 30 seconds. Just making sure we don't have any sharp points like we did before. Now while we've got everything exposed and ready, we'll go ahead and take some more black tape, and we'll just tape over this little area here. Tempting to overdo it with tape, guys. This stuff all has to fit back into this little trough, so don't overdo it. You'll just be shooting yourself in the foot thinking you're being thorough. Okay. We'll just go ahead and pinch that back over, just like that. Get it where we like it, and then we're going to trim it. Okay, trimmed. So now, the next step uh, will be to do the other side, but before we get there, why don't we just make sure we have all this wire out of the way. Yep, okay, that's good. And what I say wire out of the way, I mean down here in the servo pocket, where we never really paid attention to push this out of the way, because you want clearance for the servo to operate, of course. We never really talked about that. Some of these things kind of go without saying. and I don't mean to insult people's intelligence. I know a lot of you guys have probably done a lot of this stuff. Um, you don't really need somebody to explain it, but that's more for people that are just starting into this hobby. Or people that don't know how to do the electrical stuff. Okay, good, so we got that down there. Now this black tape, I'm sort of just thinking about this just now, but 
if I would have thought about it, I probably should have been using white tape. Because the white tape would have blended better, but whatever. It's really not a big deal one way or another. Really doesn't matter, guys. It's going to get covered up with, with tape, and it should be good enough. But you can see how nice that fits now. No, not even really a bump. That's awesome, guys. That turned out super nice. Okay, so now, two options. We can either wipe this down with alcohol, or we can just fold it back. If you wipe it down with alcohol, you're going to take some of the tack that was already there, but you'll end up with a clean adhesion with what you do have. In my case, I'm probably just going to fold it back over for now. And if we have problems, we can use the pops in your hand, not in your mouth glue to re-tack this stuff. I've actually had really good luck doing that, by the way. Okay, so we'll just run that down. This is where our resistors are. Okay, and then we're just going to stick this back where it was. Awesome, guys. That looks really nice. Okay, cool. And then this, this turned out decent. It's not... There's just this one little section where you can see the black wire. But I can certainly live with it. Okay, so we're going to flip over to the other side here. We're going to get the, the other wire and resistor terminated for the green. And then we're going to do the white, which should be the tail light for us. Uh, the tail light should be real easy. That's what I would say. It's always just as much of a pain as the last one. Okay, so same thing here. We've just kind of got to clean this up. When I say clean this up, we've already got everything wrapped on this one. So I just need to clip the end off of one side. And on the other side, I need to clip the whole thing and then redo it. Okay, so we're going to twist this again. Get it nice and neat. We're going to take and hold this resistor very gently. Using our fingernail, we're going to make a tight edge. Hold that over. Make a hook. And then the hook will receive the wire, which we'll use to make another hook. And that's what's going to get soldered together. Very good. So now, Ultimately, this needs to fold back. And you remember we had a screw up here we had to fix. That's why we have this extra wire. Um, so I'm going to slip this under here. Okay, so we got that ready to rock. Grabbing the soldering iron. Make sure you clean your tip. Start from a nice, shiny, clean tip. We'll make soldering easier. If you're using a tip that's not receiving the solder well, then moving my little tray. Okay. Dang it, stuck again, that little turd. That was a little bit of a dangerous maneuver there, pulling that thing out, guys. But you gotta do what you gotta do, right? Okay, so that should be fine there. Now I've got my soldering iron unplugged to allow that to stay cool until we get ready for the white light on the tail which might take a few minutes to get to and might not be a bad time to test things real quick while we're kind of at a middle step here yep everything's turning on so we can go right back to it so now we're just going to tuck Just going to tuck this back in after we tape over it with some black electrical tape. And I realized I was just complaining about the black tape on the other side. Well, 
I've already got two pieces of black tape, so it's pretty much the damage is already done. It's going to be what it is. And to be honest, it covered up nicely with that, with that white uh, FMS tape job there. Really impressed with the quality of this S FMS model here. I've not had an FMS uh, model yet. This will be my first, and so far so good. Uh, I, I shouldn't be surprised. It's a reputable brand. But the truth is, I just haven't run into one before. I guess I don't know how to describe FMS, if they're like the economy free wing or free wings the economy FMS or if they're just both Chinese companies that do the same thing or shoot for all I know they're owned by the same people. But uh, like I said, so far so good, really happy with this. Okay, so now I just need to get these wires tucked into this channel, into the trough. And ideally you'll get the servo cable back in there in the same orientation that it came from the factory. It should tuck in there a little bit nicer than if you try to go like out of the flat ribbon 